What's up everyone? Today I have a brand new scooter, the In Motion Climber, that I'll be taking on a first ever ride to South Beach and back today. This is a dual 750 watt motor scooter at an affordable $999. It has a max speed of 38 kilometers an hour or 23.6 miles an hour. And a range of about 35 miles in testing. It's also the first dual motor scooter to feature an IP67 waterproof rating and can handle slopes due to its name, the climber, of up to 36% with its dual motors. Also has a nice bell here. Here's the throttle. Nice uh, wide board. The kickstand I had to assemble. And they also say that it's very easy to maintain if you ever need to replace the tires, which are really comfortable, by the way. They uh, claim that it can result in 30% less flat tires. These could probably just really easily come off and you could replace the tube. And uh, the folding mechanism is very nice. All you gotta do is push this in and then pull back. And then there's another latch over here that you pick up and it goes right down there. There you go, and now it's on the scooter. I would say it's about 40 pounds. Well, let's take this on a ride to South Beach. Today's date is March 8th, 2023. It's a Wednesday afternoon, about 11.30 a.m. Temperature is a warm 82 Fahrenheit, 28 Celsius. Okay, let's turn this on. So, I don't know how well you can see the screen. Maybe I could pull it over to the side here. So it's a little bit in the shade, but there's three modes. There's a pedestrian mode. There's the middle mode, which is in the uh, code letter D. And then the fast mode, which is S. And to turn the flashlight on and off, you just hit the button once. In pedestrian mode, the uh, light is always on. Oh wait, I still have a sticker here for the light that I didn't take off. But you can see the light for pedestrian mode is on. Let's check out the pedestrian mode. We will need to kick the scooter to uh, start it because it won't start otherwise. To uh, activate the scooter, I had to download their app and there is like a bunch of menu settings that you could change. You could make it a zero start if you want to and there's also a cruise control you can enable but I just kept everything at default for now. Well, let's try the uh, pedestrian mode. It shows you the speed. The light is always blinking in pedestrian mode. Looks like it's going at about four miles an hour with the throttle completely held down, maybe three and a half miles an hour which is great because uh, that's pretty much the speed of a pedestrian. This is good for crowded areas when you don't want to get off your scooter and uh, walk around. Let's give this middle mode a try. There we go. Wow, that's a big torque there. Looks like it's topping out at 16 miles an hour. Let's try the brakes. Great brakes, by the way. Um, it's 
an electric brake in the front and the back, and there's also a disc brake in the back as well. So this can uh, definitely stop. I would say the acceleration of this middle mode is pretty much like uh, my Segway 9 Bot Max on the top speed. I think in most situations, this is a good mode to be in. Okay, let's try the max mode now on mode S. That's interesting. I don't think you could change modes while the scooter is moving. Let's try it. I'm on pedestrian mode now. I want to change it to D. Yeah, it's not allowing me to change it. What happens if I take the throttle off? Will I change, be able to change it now? No. Okay, that's, that's actually a good safety feature. I like it. So now uh, it's on the max mode. Let's give this a try. Whoa! My goodness, that is fast! I just topped out at 22 there. I didn't want to go faster on this street. But uh, now is the time to try it on Biscayne Boulevard. Well, actually not now. Let me... I'll wait until I get on the bridge because right now there's a little bit of traffic. That was a, a lot to handle there, that that top speed. I mean the uh, S mode. This alone is keeping me up with traffic. I can really, I really felt those dual motors kicking in there. To my right is Bayfront Park. Right now they're getting set up for the Ultra Music Festival at the end of this month. I'm very curious to know how this will perform on the uh, on the hill on the MacArthur Causeway to South Beach because this scooter does advertise itself as the climber. I know a lot of scooters they'll reduce their speed going up the hills. Brakes work well, that's for sure. Basically has three brakes on this. I'm going to turn on the top speed here because now there's no traffic. Well, I can't do it now. There's a red light for me. You really have to hold on when you start the scooter. I just change it to the top speed. In Motion also advertises that this scooter has an intelligent battery charging um, solution. And I'm very grateful for the InMotion company for sending me this product in exchange for a product review.
Wow. I just went from like zero to 18 in a few seconds. All right, I'm at 24 miles an hour. And that's, that's what the display shows and I'm not going any faster. Handle the bump of those train tracks pretty well. At a speed like this, you don't want to be braking su uh, suddenly. But this scooter is handling pretty well. The turns and the bumps, they uh, can take easily. There's little bumps in the paint, which are not really that much of a problem. Still going 24, but that's to be expected. It's flat ground. Coming up here is the MacArthur Causeway. There's a little bit of a hill. We can see if we decrease any kind of speed here. We're doing some construction. I should actually be on the side here. Let me get off to the side. All right, time to test the climber. Wow, no uh, problem at all. Let me slow up for this just in case. Yeah, that was a big bump, but the scooter handled it well. Wow, fast acceleration on this hill here. I'm getting up to 22. I'm not going any faster than that. So the scooters can't get at max speed up here. But even still, this is pretty incredible to be able to keep up with this kind of speed on this hill. I know my old scooter can't do this. Really impressive. Now I'm hitting 24. Which I kind of don't want to actually. I'm going to slow up. Because there's some turns here. But I can see why they call this the climber. No issue with hills with this scooter. And despite this having no shocks, it takes the bumps pretty well due to its uh, tires. They're very comfortable. There's even some sand here. The scooter can handle some light sand. And right there, I had to use the brakes because of that three-point turn. It was pretty responsive there. Yep. Brakes work very well. You have to make sure you hold on to the handlebars too. You really feel the acceleration from the standstill. On a row like this is where the extra speed really comes in handy. Because there's really no protection from the cars next to you and you want to get out of this 
roadway as fast as you can and in a safe way too. I don't think I would be too much comfortable going at a speed faster than this. 24 is plenty fast for a scooter with this kind of stature. Otherwise, I feel like I may lose control of it. I'm getting a little bit of crosswind. You do have to compensate for that. This scooter also takes nine hours to charge according to in motion. And when you charge it, they don't show you the actual number of the battery depletion level, but by a battery uh, charging indicator by number of bars, there's four in total. I wonder how many bars I'm gonna have left after I'm done with this ride, which should be very short, by the way. scooters handling really well on this straightaway. It's a beautiful day in Miami too. Not to mention this scooter is super quiet too despite it having two motors. I barely, barely hear them um, going. Looks like there's some traffic building up. And this is exactly why having a scooter here in Miami can be very beneficial, especially at a time like this in March when spring break is in effect. There might have been a crash up there. I see some uh, police lights. Looks like someone got pulled over by the police department. Nissan Sentra. And just like that, I slowed my speed down a little bit, accelerated again, and there was no problem for this scooter. I think I'm going to be using this scooter a lot, to be honest. Very easy to stop with that scooter. What I also like about the scooter too are the grips. They're very firm and it's, it feels solid. 
And in a way, this scooter is good to have a little bit of weight behind it because you feel like you can balance better. And we got to go here now in order to get over to South Beach. There's another hill here. Let's see how the in motion climber handles this last bridge to South Beach. There's actually a jogger coming down this bridge. I think I'm going to wait until this jogger comes down. That way I can really test the speed. So far, I'm very happy with this scooter. Here we go. Whoa, man. Dual motor action on this hill, wow. Once again, I'm topping out at 22 miles an hour, which is much faster than uh, my other scooter, which tops out at 18. And on a hill, it's very impressive. Look at this, I'm going faster than all these cars that are stuck in traffic. Might even be going faster than that boat passing underneath me. All right, let's slow up a bit. And you can really control the speed by pushing the throttle just a little bit down. You don't have to push it down all the way. Here's where I want to get off my scooter and walk it across. So I'm more visible. Very easy to push around, by the way. Let's actually get across really quickly here. Don't want to be, get caught in this light cycle. Now it's just a straight shot to Ocean Drive. I don't see any traffic coming, let's go. I love the way this scooter handles. It's very well made. Accelerates quickly, tops out at a very good speed, and also brakes nice.
Right now I'm at three bars of battery. So I'm assuming I already used a quarter of the scooter's charge. Okay, we've made it to Ocean Drive. Here I don't really need to go fast, so let's stop the scooter, try out the pedestrian mode here, and take in the sights and sounds of Miami Beach. I really like this pedestrian mode, but I do wish it was a little bit faster. Maybe in the settings I can change it so the pedestrian mode can be a little bit quicker, maybe to like seven miles an hour. And I could really see this being an issue when bringing this up a hill in pedestrian mode it won't really work to uh, four miles an hour. Let's change it to the middle mode. This mode is the most comfortable to use. It accelerates at a nice pace not too abrupt like the last one and I feel very comfortable riding on this all day on the uh, standard mode. Hello. Also, I love how wide this platform is for the scooter. I really feel like I have a lot of space. Bell's there if you need it. Up for these people. From here, I'm going to make a left and make my way back to downtown Miami via the Venetian Causeway. And I'll see how much battery I have left when I get to downtown. It'll be really nice if it stayed at three bars the entire time. But I have a feeling it's going to be down to two.
acceleration and really needed that braking there due to that pedestrian just stepping off into the middle of the street. So this scooter is very safe. It has the speed when you need it to, coming off a uh, red light. And if someone steps off into the middle of the street, you're able to do so really easily. Miami Beach Police Department headquarters, right on the corner there. And the uh, former City Hall building of Miami Beach is next to it. I think as I use this scooter more, I'll play around with the menu settings a little bit. and try out the zero start function, maybe the cruise control as well. I also wonder how well this waterproofing will do too. They could be very useful because in Miami it rains a lot. Sometimes you won't even know when it rains. Scooter brakes were there when I needed them too. You can hear the scooter humming as I apply the brakes. Time to make a right here on West Avenue. West End Avenue, rather. Whoa, that was a big bump. 
I didn't see that, but the scooter handled it well. That's where these tires come in. There's a driveway here that's very tricky because it's painted in green, or a few of them. Let's make a right turn here. Now I'll have to turn around. This scooter reacts very nicely to the way the throttle is gently pressed too. Okay, we're on the Venetian Causeway now, back to downtown Miami. Gentle hill here, scooters topping out at 22. Even over here, the scooter is tap, topping out at 22. Now it's 23.
a little bit of a detour. Scooter's handling these turns very well. I do have to reduce my speed though. It's uncomfortable to uh, turn at a high speed. Now I don't know why all these barricades are in the bike lane. Looks like I'm down the two bars right now. So far, the scooter is sustaining 22, 23 this entire time. Looks like we may have been too fast because now we have a bridge that went up that went up. We have to wait for it to get lowered.
I still have two bars of battery. But I guess that should be expected around the general range. 35 miles max range is based on, a, I saw their methodology based on a flat road at 60% of the power for a 165 pound rider. And uh, to go from downtown Miami to Ocean Drive is about six miles. So you figure once I get back to Bayfront Park, it'll be around 12, 13 miles or so. And I used about half of the battery, maybe more, especially because I was pushing it with the speed. Here you can see the scooter handling at a low speed. I don't feel comfortable passing since it's a narrow lane and there's traffic to my left. to make a left turn here onto Biscayne Boulevard. Here's why I have some issues because uh, there's a lot of construction and it makes the lanes narrow. This is where the speed comes really in handy. Wonder if I'll be able to go faster than this Lamborghini next to me. I really 
am going faster than the Lambo, but they're going to South Beach. to the left lane here so I can get back to Bayfront Park. Actually, I think I'll continue going straight to uh, Shopping Plaza and then turn. stop there because I don't know what this driver is doing. And here we are back to where I started. I would say that was a very smooth ride. Very impressed with this in-motion climber scooter. And I want to thank the InMotion company for sending me this product in exchange for the review. I'm very curious. Let's open up the InMotion app and see how much uh, battery I have left. Battery information. Let's see.
Well, it doesn't actually show me the battery stat. Oh, it does. I have 42% uh, battery left, which considering I was at the maximum speed going to South Beach and back for a lot of it, I would say the scooter handled pretty well. That was about a 12 mile trip with 42% battery left. They advertise 35 miles. So I would say that's pretty accurate. All right, well, thank you for watching this video, folks. I think I'm gonna use the scooter a lot more. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye everyone, take care.